Um, do you, why do people always want socialism in particular with medicine? But then they'll say, well, we don't want everything that way. I mean, I know medicine is important, but something like food is even more important in the sense that you, you eat every day, but you don't go to the doctor every day. So why is that one thing they're always... Well, the, the best argument they can make for it is um, that medicine is complicated. It's hard. Um, it's, it's, it's super complex. And therefore, the, it, it, the real problems of what, what they call asymmetrical information, right, that you don't know much, you're ignorant, uh, you could be rationally ignorant, but you're ignorant of, of the impacts of various drugs, of various treatments, of who's a good doctor and who's a bad doctor. And therefore, you're easily susceptible to manipulation. And, um, and drug companies uh, have a huge incentive to uh, bribe doctors and to con you and to present marketing stuff with bikini-clad babes so that you take their latest drug uh, or whatever, right, in a, in a totally free market. And... Uh, and uh, you can overcome those those asymmetrical problems. And as compared to, let's say, other issues where there's also these asymmetric information problems, um, this is a life or death one. So we need an objective agent. And this is this is this is again, you know, this assumption that the government can be an objective agent. We need an objective agent. We need somebody who's not motivated by self-interest. We need somebody who's not motivated by profit. We need somebody who is actually um, cares about you, Jennifer, and you, Debbie, and, and me. And, and that is the government bureaucrat who is a public servant who is there for the common good and the public interest. And they, they have no incentive to lie to us, cheat from us, and steal from us. So, um, and, and that's it. I mean, I, I, I literally, I was at, I forget if I said this last week, but I was at a conference last week. Uh, at the Montpelerin Society Conference. So I, I don't know how many of you know what Montpelerin is, but Montpelerin Society, and, and, and unfortunately, I spent two days basically in my room because I had this awful cold. So I, I, I was there at the opening night and I was there at kind of the last day of the conference. But other than that, I, I just had to skip it because I, was, I felt so bad with the cold and I didn't want to infect everybody at the conference with my cold. So uh, I stayed in my room, but I, the, I was there for a little bit. And uh, so this is a conference of the leading free market thinkers in the world, right? So it was founded, Montpellier Society was founded in 1947 by Frederick Hayek. And um, it was, um, you know, it was like a dozen of the, the, the free market thinkers in the world at the time. Of course, they didn't invite Ayn Rand, uh, which is telling in and of itself. And I don't think they ever invited Ayn Rand throughout the history of the Montpellier. Again, one of the great tragedies of, um, of, of the 20th century that the free market thinkers didn't take us seriously. Um, but um, she, uh, uh, anyway, so it became an annual conference or once every two years in a different place in the world where all the leading thinkers in free markets would come together and, and debate. And the original members were uh, Hayek and, and Mises, von Mises and, uh, and Milton Friedman and all kind of the legends of the free market economists, primarily economists, most economists, but not exclusively. And, um, you know, Mises used to get really upset at them and they used to argue about, because Mises was, was the one who was really consistent and, and, um, and uh, you know, he, 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 the one that uh, he was the consistent and used to argue with them about, about um, uh, central banks and about, uh, and, and one of the amazing things, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's, a, um, um, it's supposedly people who are committed, 100% of free markets. And then, so in the, in the opening banquet, um, I, I was at the opening banquet and uh, I met this guy who is on the organizing committee. I guess he heads the organizing committee for next year's big conference, which is in Oslo, Norway. It'll be in October in Oslo, Norway. And I don't know, we, we were chatting and he, he talked about, he suddenly it somehow got to healthcare and he was like, yeah, you know, um, uh, our great system in Norway and your pathetic system in the United States. And, uh, uh, you know, how can you tolerate not having socialized, in a sense, not having socialized medicine in the United States? And it was like, whoa, you're on the organizing committee? 
This is a free market conference? What, what the hell? The left, as David would say, has infiltrated even Mont Pelerin, right? <laughs> um, it, was, it, was, it was pretty uh, shocking. Uh, but, but I know that there are people there who are, um, who are uh, uh, I don't know, uh, compromisers, particularly the Europeans on economic issues. But then there's some Europeans who are great, who are, who are really, really uh, tough. And then there's some... There's, there's plenty of nationalists there. There was certainly one conservative nationalist at the conference. There, there are anarchists there. There's, several, there's at least one on the board of directors, actually two on the board of directors. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a quite a diverse uh, mixed group, but it's, you know, free markets is not necessarily what unites them. Not really, uh, not really free markets. So, um, but healthcare is the one thing that people fall on because of its importance, because of its complexity, because of its life or death consequences. And uh, again, even among free marketers, there is this perspective of we need a um, kind of free market referee in a sense. Even Switzerland doesn't have a true free market healthcare system. Uh, it's better than any other country in Europe, but it's not a true free market healthcare system. Uh, it's, it's, I think... Uh, uh, so, uh, no country in the world, unfortunately, Singapore has a pretty good system, but it's not really free market. No country has a purely free market system in the world, and uh, certainly not the United States. Uh, I wish we did. I wish there was one. Uh, it would be cool, but um, we don't have it. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.